Well, turn to 1 Chronicles 26, 12. 1 Chronicles 26, 12. So verse 8 says, All these sons of Obed Obedidim, they and their sons and their brethren, also able men for strength for service, were three score, two of Obedidim, and Mesopotam had sons and brethren, strong men, eighteen. Also of the children of Merah had sons, Samir the chief, for though he was not the firstborn, yet his father made him the chief. Hilakai the second, Tilba the third, Zechariah the fourth, all the sons of the brethren were Hosea were thirteen. Among these divisions were the porters. Even among the chief men, having wards one against another, to minister in the house of the Lord. Now, that's King James. Let's see here. Well, verse eight talks about them being capable men, and what these were were watchmen. They were security. They were priests working in the temple as security. They were watchmen. And what did they look for? Strong and capable men. Now, are we talking about, they're talking about physical strength. God's looking for spiritual strength. He's still looking for watchmen that are strong and capable men and women. Come on. This is not done away with. That God didn't just say that's it. He's still looking for watchmen. We're going to look at other scriptures. We're going to establish this today. Some of you may have heard this throughout your Christian life, but maybe you just never grasped that God is still looking for watchmen, and He's called every blood-bought believer to be one. It's just not it's just anybody. He's called you to be a watchman on the wall, and He needs you to be strong and capable. Amen. And if you're not living your life as such, You'll be weak and feeble. Come on. Listen, the children of Israel wandering around for 40 years in the desert, they came out with the same clothes on them, and not one of them was weak and feeble. 40 years, not one of them was weak and feeble. If he can do that then, he can do that now. But you have to know your God, right? Sometimes I don't think we really know our God. Oh man, it's getting bad out there. Do you know that they had all kinds of adultery and nasty, wicked sexual immorality during Paul's time? Have you not read Corinthians, some other stuff that they did? And the same Jesus saved them and turned their world upside down. Why? Because men and women decided to be watchmen on the wall and love Jesus more than they love the things of the flesh. And as they love Jesus more than they love things of the flesh, they were then able to start pulling down strongholds. They were able to be watchmen on the wall and say, there's some stuff coming you need to brace. Brace. We need to, we need to start praying and taking authority over that. You know, 45 years ago, I can remember sitting in church and, and real prophets, men of God, prophesied what would be on our TVs and things today that I, I grew up around. And they, you know, the, I really thought they were crazy, if I'm being honest. I thought that trash will never be, that would never be on TV. But they were proclaiming as watchmen for the church to pray. But I'm afraid a lot of the adults acted like I did as a kid and thought, well, that'll never happen in America. And they sit on their little duffs and roll by and let it roll in. The, the church has been like a lobster in a boiling pot. And they just sit and take it and not knowing what they've done. But it's time for the church to wake up and be watchmen upon the wall. Does that mean we go around? Is he calling for hatred? No. If any of those people that was in that Lord's Supper thing was sitting right here today, I would sit down with them the same way I've sat down with every one of you and look them in the eye and tell them how much Jesus loves them, how much I love them, and that they can have a different life and that repentance is the gateway to freedom. Amen. But in no way, shape, or form would I ever endorse what they're doing. Amen. Amen. Do you know what silence sometimes is just as much endorsement? But I don't have to be ugly also to be a watchman. 
I don't have to have a religious spirit to be a watchman. Come on. Are we to rebuke people or rebuke spirits? Spirits. Exactly. We need to be in our prayer closets pulling down heaven. Because those people that have spirits on, they need to be set free and delivered. Jesus died so they could be saved. Just like he, they, he died so that we could be saved. Ain't none of those any worse than I once was. And he saved me. Come on. But thankfully I had a church that knew how to pray, who had watchmen on the wall, that said, that young man shall not go that way. We are standing in the gap and we're going to fight for him. <laughs> Some of you are tired, I understand. Some of you are wore out. Some of you have almost given up hope. But I'm here to tell you this morning, now is not the time to lay down. Now is the time to get your faith recouraged. Now is the time to build yourself back up and praying in the Holy Ghost building up your faith so that you can start warring. Some of you, your family may just be on the brink. You know, it's always it's always darker right before the dawn. It, it may sad be a saying, but it's scriptural. Come on. Y'all still here today? Yes. Let's look at a few more verses. You won't think I'm cherry picking here. Amen. Oh, glory. John 10 3. John 10 3. Well, let's just start at verse 1. Truly, truly, I tell you, one who does not enter in by the door to the sheepfold but climbs up another way, the same as a thief and a robber. I mean, no matter what anybody wants to say, there's only one way to heaven. And that's Jesus. But one who enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. We are called to be the gatekeepers to open the gate for the lost and say, come on, this is the way. Come on, this is the way, walk in it. You're called to be the gatekeeper. They ain't never going to find it on their own. They're lost. That's why we call them that. They're out there wandering around in the dark. They have no way. You are the gatekeeper that opens it up to the narrow way and says, this is the way. Walk in it. If you don't want, if you're not a gatekeeper, who is? Am I going to meet all the people in your family? No. Am I going to meet everybody you work with? Am I going to meet everybody you come in contact with? But you are. You're a gatekeeper. You can introduce them to Jesus or you can just let them slide on by to hell. We've been letting them slide on by and it shows. The whole world's going to hell in a handbasket. We're living in the days of Noah. I know that it's the days of Noah. It'll be in this now. Yes, we're living in biblical proportions in the last days. But don't forget the rest of that verse. He'll pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. But it takes gatekeepers for Him to pour His Spirit out through. Somebody's got to open the gate for the Spirit to flow to them. Somebody's got to be a gatekeeper. Somebody's got to be the one to open the door. Is it going to be you? I've made my mind up it's going to be me. I'm going to open the gate. I'm opening it right now. It's pouring out. Amen. You can choose to say, I want some of that. Or you can say, mm, I wish you'd get done. I want the chicken going to be ready. <laughs> or whatever you're eating for dinner. <laughs> the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out whenever he brings out his own sheep he goes before them the sheep follow him and they know his voice I mean, the sheep know the gatekeeper they know yes. Jesus they know they should know their pastor yes. just telling you you start to see this ain't a one off well, God's wanting you to be a gatekeeper. 
How many thinks the church fell asleep at the wheel and the gatekeepers fell off the wall? I do. Can we do anything about the rest of the church? Can we do something about this church? Can we get back on the wall? Can one church, church change the rest of the world? I believe it can. Twelve disciples turned the world upside down. <clears throat> Psalms 84.10 For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper, which is another word for what? Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper. In the house of my God in the dwell in the tents of wickedness. God is calling you to be a gatekeeper. But it's not just to keep evil out. It's to go and let His glory out into the world. And it's to steward the world that is around you. Quit being a thermometer and start being a thermostat. You have weapons mighty to pulling down strongholds. Well, I don't know the word like you do, preacher. Well, probably not. That's probably why I'm pastor. But you, you can get there. I promise you. Amen. Some of you may know the word better than me. I'm not. That does not intimidate me one bit. It's not a competition. Amen. The point is, is to start. And to stand. And to keep standing. And sometimes you'll grow tired. If I'm being honest... I'm tired of resisting sickness in my body. Amen. But does that make His Word any less true? No. 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 How many think Job was probably got a little tired? Yeah. <laughs> How many know that God didn't let Job down? No. How many knew Job knew who his God was? No. That's the difference. Y'all with me this morning? Yeah. You're gonna, I, I've had plenty of Job comforters. I just need my crazy faith friends. Amen. Amen. The rest of them can beat feet as far as I'm concerned. And I'm thankful for you that are still here. I may not be up and running around this morning, but I'm preaching a message that will change your life and give you a hold of it. But someday I will be up running around with you. Alright, let's look at another one. Are you all still with me? First Chronicles chapter 9. First Chronicles chapter 9, verse 22. And all these were chosen to be porters. What's another name for a porter? Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper. You know what another name is that some people use for these, which is it's true. Usher. You know, we have ushers that we, we have people that guard our gate when they come in here. And and we're not and they're guarding the spirits around. Whether or not you know it or not, when you come in that door, they're praying for you. Amen. And we only allow certain stuff in here. If you bring something else with you, we're going to knock it off of before it gets in the door. Amen. Now some of you have slipped some stuff in here and I've got to deal with it later on. You need to knock that off. <laughs> but that's why you come to church, right? Amen. It's not the well that need a physician, it's the sick. So all those were chosen to be gatekeepers were 212. They were reckoned by their GR village of David and Samuel, the seer they were ordained in their set office. Listen, God is calling the church back to the office of a gatekeeper. Now am I trying to put you in a five-fold ministry as a gatekeeper? Don't twist my words. But there is the office of a gatekeeper that God is calling the church. That's all of us back into. I've heard it spit for years. I've heard people, there, there's whole groups that got twisted up with prayer and intercessory that got stuff out of alignment that said all this stuff and then they spent hours praying mumbo jumbo prayers and declaring things. Listen, God's not asking for a show. He's asking for people just to stand in faith and say, you shall not pass. I'm taking that wall down in Jesus' name. Flamboyantly in your prayer closet at home and together as a corporate body. Come on. 
You hearing me this morning? All right. Let's see, I got one more. Oh, maybe two. Ezekiel 33. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. Watch. Come on, watchman. For when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and take it not warning, if the sword come and take away his blood, shall be upon his own head. I mean, no watchman should be saying, Jesus is coming soon! Get your act together! He's about to split the eastern sky! Quit screwing around! Amen. Come on! Well, a day with the Lord is a thousand years. Yes, I preach that. It is. He could be here tomorrow. He could be here in, in, in five minutes with him. It could be another 5,000 years. But everything in this earth that the book of the book of the shows us shows he's coming back any moment, any day. And we need to, if we believe that, we should be ready to start pouring out his spirit. But we need to be watchmen that are taking a hold of the strongholds and pulling them down. I, you know, you know what I've seen every time there's something like this. Uh, uh, that fiasco at the Olympics is tons of people that claim to be believers get upset and then five seconds later they're posting some other atrocity that's worse than probably that but it's their own thing so they do that and then they're on to the next thing and then they're saying this or saying that and it's on and on and on and why is it able to come? Because people have a form of godliness and they deny the power thereof. Am I here beating on you this morning? No, but I'm saying it's time to get up. It's time to be the watchman on the wall. Do you really believe? Listen, here's the thing. Do you believe you can pray and change something right now some other place? Yes. Then let's do it. If that was your son or daughter that was trapped in homosexuality, would you want someone praying for them or ridiculing them? Praying. Praying. And I mean praying. Where they can see right, think right, be in their right mind. And every demonic spirit that's on them is broken in Jesus' name. Do you see what I'm saying? Out of love, not out of disgust. Right. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took no warning. His blood should be over for he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Let the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet. The people are not warned of the sword come and take any person among them. He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Listen, if you keep your mouth shut and sit on your duff, that blood will be required of you. We are all the watchmen on the wall as God's kids. And if we sit back and do nothing, we're as guilty as the ones doing it. Yes. I know I'm preaching strong this morning. But ain't it time to be strong and do great exploits? Ain't it time to start praying and pulling down some strongholds? So thou, O son of man, I have sent thee a watchman in the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. How many of we've heard his word? Come on, are you with me? Yes. Isaiah 21, 6. For thus said the Lord, said unto me, Go set a watchman, let him declare what he sees. Before that, verse 5, it says, Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower, eat, drink, arise, ye princes, anoint the shield. For thus the, hath the Lord said unto me, Go set a watchman, let him declare what he said. How many are answering the call this morning to start being a watchman on the wall? To start doing something, saying something in the Spirit. 
You know, if more people prayed instead of protesting, we could change some things. The first thing I have to change usually to me, though, that's the hard work. <laughs> but I mean, no God can help us. In our weakness, His strength is made perfect. Amen. In my own strength, I would have failed a long time ago with some of these obstacles I've had to overcome. But through God, I'm still standing strong. Amen. Come on, I'm being honest. I used to be, I say used to be because I don't really feel like I am anymore. I used to be a man's man. Ooh, hoorah! Man, I could push through anything, you know. Super tough! Ooh. But you know, I, I found some things over the last decade that I just couldn't whip on my own. You know, if it hadn't been for Jesus, that, that wheelchair may have whooped me. And now as I come back and through some of the things I'm going through now, and the devil's telling me it's going to be this way or that way. By, by the way, be a good jury when the devil starts telling you things because he's a liar and there's no truth in him. So whatever he's telling you the opposite is, and you need to encourage yourself with that. Amen. Whatever that thing is you're facing at home that he's telling you they're going to be this and it's going to be that and it's going to be this bad, be encouraged. The Bible says he's a liar and there's no truth in him. So whatever he's saying, the opposite is true. And he's trying to get his bluff in on you and wear you out. And you need to stop listening to him. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Come on. That's how depression usually works. He, listen, he's an angel of light. He takes a little bit of truth, perverts it, twists it up, and spits it back out at you as a whole fact. And you just need to go, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Well, I did. He came right back. Well, rebuke him again. You've got the power. Right. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Because then when you've rebuked it, you've defeated it, guess what you can do? You can then help somebody else defeat it in their life by standing in your prayer closet. Amen. Lord, I just thank you right now. They'll be in their right mind. And every, every struggle, every addiction, uh, Lord, every spirit of reasoning, every spirit of depression, Lord, I just break it right now in Jesus' name in this room. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Every bit of belittling, every, every spirit of insecurity and worthlessness, it's rebuked right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. See, some of you need to start seeing yourself as God sees you more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You're a king's kid. Amen? Amen. See, some of you think, well, I, I, yeah, pastor can be a gatekeeper, but I ain't never cut out to be one. Man, if you ain't cut out to be one, ain't nobody. Yeah. We're all made to be gatekeepers. And the enemy's kept our mouth shut for way too long. Amen?